Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Nisha and in today's video, I'm going to be teaching you all about importing food products specifically from India into the UK. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of my future videos. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. So you're watching this video now because you are either in the initial idea stage where you where you're thinking to import the food products or you have already decided okay i'm going to import the food products from india into the uk and you might not be sure where to start or what are the entire process that's involved so today i'll be taking you through the entire cycle or the different stages from the start till the end of you know what is the process that is involved So you've already decided that you are going to import a food product, right? But have you decided what food product you're going to import? Because that's the very first step. You need to decide what is the food product that you're going to import. Because there are lots of food products that is being imported from India. It can be like rice or spices or ready to eat food or frozen food or ready to eat snacks as well, you know. And you've got certain regional snacks, you've got certain national Indian snacks as well. So you've got a lot of food products like pulses, dal, lentils, you know, those kind of things as well. And fruits vegetables you've got a wide range of food products that is being imported from india so how do you decide what you're going to import because you've got these you know huge list of items there so for that what you need to think about is why you want to import why you want to import that specific product or why you want to import food products is it because it is any specialty from your you know specific region where you are from in in india or is, is there any specific niche or demand in the uk for that specific product or are you bringing any type of flavors you know if you're from hyderabad or if you're from any of those places are you bringing any type of flavors from your country or from your uh, region like how we have these uh, authentic indian flavors authentic caribbean flavors you know those kind of flavors as well or is it any specific trend that you're going to tap into the uk market like you've got this uh, low carb diet or you've got the low fat healthy diet you've got the high protein diet or is it going to be the veganism or the plant-based diet that you're going to tap in the market so these are the kind of things that you're going to be thinking about why you're going to be importing a specific food product if you're thinking of any kind of these, you know, the regional products, you will be thinking because if I am thinking I might be importing specifically from Kerala. So it can be anything related to banana plantain, you know, so it can be banana chips or it can be anything related to coconut. So it can be coconut flour, coconut sugar, or it can be coconut chips or even just the plain coconut, coconut milk, coconut water, you know, anything related to coconut, I'll be able to easily source it or I'll be sourcing anything related to jackfruit. So if you are from Gujarat, you might have specific specific Gujarat, uh, you know, uh, specific cuisines that you have there, Khakra, Bakra, you've got these kind of things as well. So you need to think, why is it that specifically that you're going to bring from your place into the UK? Is it going to be tapping into the market as well? For that, you can speak to your friends and family and ask if there is any thing that they're missing from their hometown here and then you can plan to bring those kind of products. The reason you're also speaking to your friends and family is because you need to find if there is a demand for that product because once you bring those products here in the UK and if there is no customers for you to buy, then there is no point in bringing those products. So that's the reason you need to find out if there is a demand for those products. How do you find out if there is a demand for those products? There comes the how. So how are you going to find if there is a demand for your product? That is by doing a research. Have you researched about your competitors in the market? Are there big brands or big players in the market who already does your product? If they are already doing your product, then you have to see how can I make it different or you know how how will I stand out? So these are the hows that you need to think about. How will my product be different from the existing products that is there in the market? How will I stand out from these existing products in the market? And how will I create an interest in an existing audience? So it's just not your friends or family you need to speak or you can speak to the shopkeepers, the local delis, the local takeaways, the caterers, the restaurants, you know. So basically 
any people you come across you speak to them and try to understand what is the demand or what is the need that these people have that you can serve so when you're doing all this it will help you in deciding who your target audience is going to be so that will be your who so you've got you know you will be covering all the w's basically so that will be your target market that is who is going to be your audience are you going to be targeting the families are you going to be targeting just the mums or are you going to be targeting um, you know the dads the office goers or is it going to be millennials or is it going to be you know people who are into very much into healthy trendy you know people going to the gym those kind of people or is it very uh, you know the kids oriented so what kind of target customers are you going to have for the for your product and then when you say about your b2b customers you can think about is it going to be am i going to be selling to your the restaurants is it going to be the to the shop the health stores so what kind of uh, you know customers will i be targeting there to sell as well so basically when you have shortlisted all these it will help you in deciding the packaging for your products as well because if you are targeting let's say you know restaurants and caterers and the food service customers then you can plan to bring it all in bulk pack because again if you're bringing rice you know you need you can bring it in bulk pack if i'm bringing banana chips or any of those crisp items you i can always plan to bring it in like 5 kilo 10 kilo bags which i can give it in bulk to these restaurants and catering customers and they can use it for their uh, you know for selling it in their shop so the good thing about the bulk pack is you have more margins in your hand and you do not have to waste so much of money and energy in doing a bit of branding and beautifying your packaging and products because it's just going to be a bulk pack you know which is which is put in a plastic bag and just a sticker with the ingredients list and everything and you also will so saving lot of printing cost and you know the packaging cost and everything but if it's a retail pack you will be having more of uh, costings involved and you will be losing a lot of margin as well because obviously you will be spending a lot of time in your branding the logo the designing the packaging you know the color coordination then the labeling so all those kind of things and the expiry expiry date is there for both but uh, the labeling and all those kind of things and then you'll also have to be giving it if you're going to a wholesaler then he'll be having his margin if he's selling it to the shopkeeper then they'll be taking the margin as well so that is something which you have to think about you know what depending on the type of the b2b consumer you need to do the packaging after you have thought of all that now you can think about who is going to be your supplier or who is going to manufacture your product so when you are finding your manufacturer in india i would say rather than going there are lots of agents who might help you out but it will be good if you can find the manufacturer and speak to the manufacturer yourself because you, again you can save a bit of commission money or you know you can save that middleman fees if you don't go uh, through an agent if you go directly to the manufacturer you can deal directly with them and build a relationship with them as well so when you're speaking to the manufacturer there are a few things that you need to keep in mind you need to understand uh, you know whether he makes products that is similar to you only then he'll be have the capability to do that and then support you as well does he do small volumes like because you will be a beginner and you will not take big orders so you'll have to see whether they do small volumes which you require if not what is their moq that is the minimum order quantity so uh, can you afford to do that moq you know because accordingly you can decide what kind of investment that they will be looking for or what kind of investment you need to plan to to bring the orders in and then you need to ask them you know what kind of certifications do they have you can always ask them for the certificates because the for exporting from india into the uk or for ex- exporting from india internationally anywhere they would need a basic fss ai license that is you know required for any any manufacturer in india for exporting so you need to see if they have that as well if they already have experience with exporting into the uk or any other place so that it will be a bit more helpful to you because they can guide you a bit more as well about the international standards and then a bit more about this uh, the certifications for the factory is uh, there is something called hacip that is h a c c p which is what is a food safety standard which is an international recognized food safety standard which shows that they are complying with the basic hygiene procedures within the factory so that will you know it would be good to have a hacip procedure in place and you can also ask them to see that they've got the certificate for that 
another certification is ISO 22000 which will be a certification which most of the factories have and that means you know that they've got these specific procedures in place they've got the basic hygiene and the uh, you know other compliance systems in place so you can be at peace that they do the work and kind of especially the hygiene procedures is there in place then you need to ask them what are the payment terms uh, you know so because that will help you in deciding your cash flow as well so is he going to be taking full advance payment or is it going to be 50 percent advance payment and the rest when you receive the goods in the uk or is it going to be through the bank uh, you know bank transfer or is it going to be through the letter of credit through the bank so these are the kind of things that you need to clarify before you place the order also you need to ask them what happens if you are not happy with the quality of the goods so once you receive the goods in the uk and if at all there are any issues with the goods then you need to understand before that itself how are they going to support you will they be providing you with a refund or are they going to send you more uh, you know the better goods or anything like that so that is always good to clarify in right and when you are doing these retail products um, as i said earlier you need to keep an eye on the labeling as well so uh, for that there are the, just the basic things that you need to keep an eye out for you need to have the product name the product description and the expiry date the batch code and also you need to think about um, your you know the, you have to say where the country of origin is especially after brexit it's very very strict that you need to state the country of origin so you have to say manufactured in india or made in india and importer's address in the uk because you need to have the address in the on the packaging as well so imported by so and so so that is what you would be doing for that and the barcode you need to make sure that the barcode is scannable or it's readable because sometimes what happens is the barcode can be squeezed up and it might not be scannable you know when you get to the till so that can be an issue as well because once it has happened to us that's the reason i'm always careful about you know the barcode that uh, it is readable and for the barcode you can always go to the website called gs1 uk there is one in india as well it's called gs1 india so that is the most popular and the reliable website for getting the barcode i leave all the links in the description below for you to have a look at it uh, you know in detail later so i'll be creating part two of this video in which i'm planning to talk about uh, the different type of shelf life you have for uh, food products and also the freight types whether it's being air freight or sea freight and the things that you need to keep in mind there as well and finally the costings that is involved when you are importing the food products from abroad hope you found this uh, video useful if you did find it useful please do share it with your friends or whoever you feel uh, you know will find this useful and um, thank you very much for watching this video and i look forward to seeing you in my next video thank you take care and bye bye